In one of my previous videos, we looked at the possibility of terraforming Mars into a kind of backup Earth to avoid extinction events such as asteroid impacts. And while it is very possible that we'll see colonies on Mars within our lifetime, it raises the question, why don't we ever hear about colonizing Venus? By all accounts, it looks more promising on paper. Venus is closer to Earth than Mars is. It's nearly identical in size to Earth, has a gravity very similar to Earth, and it has a nice thick atmosphere to protect the surface from harmful radiation. Sounds perfect, right? Well, our sister planet has a few flaws that make her a bit less agreeable to human life. To put it simply, if you were asked to picture a blood-soaked nightmarish hellscape, you could very easily picture the surface of Venus. Say you were part of a daring mission to land on the surface of Venus, and you managed to touch down somewhere without dying. Spoiler alert, that's impossible, but just go with it. You hop out of your lander ready to proudly plant your flag, then you burst into flames. Then you implode. Then your lander implodes. Then your lucky block of lead melts. Get the picture? The surface of Venus is really, really hot, around 450 degrees Celsius at the equator. The pressure on the surface is unbearable, even for reinforced probes, at roughly 90 times greater than on Earth. This has caused the untimely demise of various probes over the years, with even the most successful missions being extremely short-lived, lasting around an hour at most. Okay, so surface landings are out of the question for now. Doesn't that rule Venus out for colonization? Not entirely. We just have to think a little more... Star Wars. It's true that the surface of Venus is far too hot, but as you ascend through the atmosphere, the temperature begins to drop dramatically. At an altitude of about 50 kilometers, it measures a much more manageable 75 degrees Celsius. Jeffrey Landis of NASA's Glenn Research Center explains that a problem with a Venus colony stems from our preconceived notions of what colonization looks like. He says, The problem with Venus is merely that the ground level is too far below the one atmosphere level. At cloud top level, Venus is the paradise planet. And he's not exaggerating. Well, maybe a little bit. But the fact is that the upper atmosphere of Venus looks very promising indeed. As early as 1971, scientists began to propose various approaches to colonizing the Venusian atmosphere. More recently, we've seen proposals of what are called aerostat habitats, basically more advanced blimps or rigid airships, followed by something straight out of a sci-fi movie, floating cities. Let's start by looking at the prototype habitats. Since the Venusian atmosphere is mostly composed of dense carbon dioxide, a mixture of breathable air composed of oxygen and nitrogen could act as a lifting gas, equivalent to about 60% of the lifting power of helium here on Earth. The idea is that a large balloon full of human-safe gases could suspend a small colony or scientific outpost in mid-air. The balloon would be safe from the searing heat and overwhelming pressure of the surface, and would be shielded from cosmic radiation by the upper atmosphere, which has roughly equivalent shielding potential to Earth. The little floating outpost could drift along indefinitely, gathering useful information about our sister planet. Well, it wouldn't exactly drift along, as wind speeds above the cloud layer can reach up to 340 kilometers per hour. But still, there would be no harm in letting the balloon be carried around the planet on the winds. In fact, allowing the blimp to move freely rather than attempting to keep it in one place would greatly reduce structural stress from the wind. When we think about the kind of protective gear astronauts typically need to wear, you probably picture the big puffy white suit, right? The amazing thing about the skies of Venus is that colonists wouldn't need any of that heavy, pressurized equipment. All they would need is a source of oxygen and protection from the occasional acidic rain and higher temperatures. As advances are made to these floating colonies, even the need for these small protective measures could be done away with. We could see an enclosed dome full of breathable air, rendering oxygen tanks unnecessary, and allowing scientists to work in relative comfort. Eventually, we could see full-scale floating cities above the clouds of Venus. Since the atmosphere is mostly carbon dioxide, it would be relatively easy to grow plants and food, after filtering out the sulfuric acid. This would go a long way towards making colonies more self-sufficient. Of course, it's not all sunshine and daisies above the clouds there would still be some difficult problems to overcome. First, Venus is almost entirely devoid of water in any form. Those nice puffy clouds? That would be the highly corrosive sulfuric acid and sulfur dioxide vapor. Speaking of sulfuric acid, it would be absolutely critical that any craft in the Venusian atmosphere be constructed of or coated in material resistant to corrosion by the acid. Now, there is some water content in the sulfuric acid itself, but it would have to be heavily treated and filtered to be made safe for human use. Importing water from Earth or nearby asteroids would be expensive and time-consuming, but seems to be necessary based on our current understanding of Venus. Of course, even if we can solve these problems efficiently and set up thriving cloud cities, there will still be that nagging feeling pushing us to really make the planet habitable. Such a goal would require extensive terraforming, and with our current level of technology, that would take a very long time. Proposals for terraforming Venus cite three main goals. First, remove or convert the dense carbon dioxide atmosphere into something more hospitable. 
Second, reduce the scorching 450 degree surface temperature. And finally, establish a day-night cycle more similar to that of Earth, though some studies suggest that Venus's 243-day rotation period would actually be an advantage in preserving Earth-like conditions on a terraformed Venus. Most proposals intend to reach their goals by freezing most of the planet's carbon dioxide and introducing large amounts of hydrogen or water, both of which Venus desperately needs to become more human-friendly. But these plans are a long way off, especially given the public's unending interest in terraforming Mars. So, for the time being, we'll have to be content to wait for our cloud cities. Then maybe someday, once we've established thriving colonies above the Venusian clouds, we can brave the elements of the surface and truly start to make Venus our home away from home. If you'd like to learn more about Venus and its potential for hosting life, check out the links in the description. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and leave a comment down below with what you think of the idea of cloud cities. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out my other space-related videos by clicking here. Or if you've got some time to kill, you can watch all of my videos by clicking here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.